Nobody's carrying camera to follow you. It's what you describe that will tell people how you got here tomorrow. Now, it's important to start by saying to a person who does not have seed in the ground, rain is a disturbance. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. When rain is falling, the people who have done something are happy. <laughs> now I'm asking you when the rain of God's power starts to pour upon us as a ministry and as individuals will it meet your seed or it will meet your talk I'm encouraging you to please be intentional very soon gap will start to show you will start to wonder ah ah Shibimi and this person, we started that it is the laboring more than others that make us prosper more than others. Yes, sir. Let us be intentional, you know, about how we sow our seed, you know, how we conduct our lives. One of the things that an ordinary child misses is that while he was growing up, nobody told him he could be great. Mm. So he was just living his life carelessly, impregnating one person there, his living with one girl there, just reflecting his toaster skills every hour. But if they told him tomorrow you were destined to What do you want Aaron? Yes. For nothing that commends himself is approved. 
introduces that. It's not you to say, man, I, I commend myself. You see how they try. It's not even people to tell you. So the first one says, it's not people that I'm not looking for men's approval. Then I'm not looking for my own approval. You can't just sit down and say, I'm trying for God. It's not him that men approves that is approved. It's not him that approves himself that is approved. It is the one that God approves. God is in the business of approving people. Praise God. In Romans 14.4. Which one is that? Who has 14.4? It looks like you guys don't want to read that Romans 44. He said, Who are you that you are judging another man's servant? To his master he stands or falls. Yea, he shall be holding up. God is in the business of holding his people up. It is, you are personally saying God is a weak God not to be able to hold his children up because you think that they are falling. No. God is able to hold his people up. Do you know there are many people that maybe they, they were born again, they were Christians, they were going and they were misbehaving or something. He says, it's not to you, it stands. Yes, yes, it's not to you, it's not to you. It's not standing for you. It's standing for God. God is able to hold him up. He's saying God is his master. He's not standing for you. He's not standing for your opinion. There are some of you here that you don't know that God is holding you up. Sustaining you with wisdom. Sustaining And this is important for me. Because at some point, everybody su survives or is valued by the approval of people. Yes, now, what am I trying to bring to your attention? Satan, you know, I like what um, the Western pastor said last time. How that the enemy is seeking to give you discredit. He wants to take from your credentials. I've always said it. What Satan does, oh, you know, be Christian. Oh, yeah, I think, I think, I think. That's what he wants to do to you. He wants to make you feel smaller than the qualification of God. He wants to make you feel inadequate to serve God. So, this approval is a tool in Satan's hand to discredit the, the believer from serving God properly. That's the concept of condemnation. You, you fit among people so if disapproval is that powerful approval is powerful yes, sir. we must learn to live for god's approval daily we must not learn to i mean we must not learn we must not live for people's approval but for god's approval and this is important that's what i want to really stress this evening about quickly like i said it's a brief charge seeking to stay for the approval of god let somebody read for me that romans 14 verse 18 I just want to show you some things quickly, sharp, 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 about gaining approval of God. Please, uh, you guys are not opening scriptures tonight. It looks like you are not in the mood. All right, let me open my own Bible. Yes, go ahead, sir. For it as in these things, the servant Christ is acceptable to God. He said, if you serve Christ in these things, you are acceptable to God. May you be acceptable to God. Yeah. See, listen, when men accept you, it's not enough. Yeah. But that if you serve Christ in these things, what are the these things? Sir, go to verse 17 so that you get context. Okay, I'm, I'm spoiling your record. <laughs> he said, For the kingdom of God is not in meat and drink, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Now, it now says, If you serve God in these things, that is in righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost, read it again, sir, verse 18. If you in this matter of righteousness, peace, and joy, you only go serve God, eh? you are acceptable to God and approved of men. <laughs> you can be approved of men also, but you must also first of all be acceptable to God. Very important. Don't over impress yourself. Yes, sir. Yes. Don't over impress yourself that are ah, men like me. Ask yourself, am I acceptable to God? Mm. That's very important. If all men punish you and God accepts you, you are accepted. If all men accept you and God banishes you, you are a waste. Mm. I wanted to seek for the utmost approval of God. See, eh, what I'm teaching you tonight will save you a lot. Yes, let your heart, whether you are a pastor or a minister, wherever you are in your life, let God's approval be your utmost. Yes, Jesus Christ did not start anything until God said, well done, my good and faithful servant. Let that be your pleasure. 
Your Christian life every day should matter that when day you are starting to say, God will tell you, well done, my good and faithful servant. Very important that in all that you do, more than men say thank you, thank you, let God say thank you. Let God, in fact, God doesn't say thank you. God says, well done. Because he made you for that purpose. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You are not doing him a favor when you do your purpose. You don't tell a machine, thank you. That I made you for that purpose. Yes. I want you to see that your greatest... Jesus. 
Jesus Christ. He said, Ye men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth. A man approved of God among you by miracles, wonders, and signs which God did by him in the midst of you. As you guys know the truth, you know the fact. Jesus Christ, a man approved of God. I want to spell that out. Jesus also needed to be man that is approved of God. You must desire this if you will grow. You must desire God's approval among men, among you. Now, as it is today, the church of God, we must know that there is an approval that comes from God yes, through his servants. Yes. Very important. He's not just there to just be teaching you messages. A man of God can stand and say, this is an authentic son. You see, the way God said, this is my beloved son, that's approval. Yes, in whom I'm well pleased. Yes. The first one said, in whom I'm well pleased. That, after approval, the guy was, Jesus, I mean by the guy, forgive me, but, yeah. Was led by the Holy Ghost to be tempted of the devil for what days after the first one. By the time we came to Matthew 17 on the figure of of transfiguration, God added something more to that first one. He said, hear ye him. Oh, yes. Hear ye him. The first one did not say, hear ye him. This is my beloved son. He's my son, but I can't tell him to talk to you now. By chapter 17, he said, now, guys, he can talk on my behalf. He can talk on my behalf. Hear ye him is not just a statement, it's an instruction. Yes, sir. That when there's a time in your business, when God approves of you, God says, hear ye him. The whole world must listen to you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's why after that time, Jesus became, any small thing he did was headline. Because you got God's approval. Don't run that business without God's approval. Yes, sir. Don't do that marriage without God's approval. Yes, sir. Don't run your life without God's approval. Don't live like, in fact, God's approval is not just saying, Lord, should I do that? It's that God looks at you and says, this is my beloved son. And there are things that we make God approve. You know, but when I told you is study. Study. Don't be lazy. Can I get a handkerchief? I forgot my piece. How much shall we get a tissue or a handkerchief? Because I, I'm anticipating a lot of sweat here. Thank you, please. Hey, just drop it because I'll then use everything. Thank you. Approval, very important. Can I hear your email, please? Yeah. Live your Christian life with meaning in heart. As a student, you can live with seeking for God's approval. Lord, should I do this or should I? It, does not, it doesn't even have to be a sin. It doesn't have to be that should I sin or not? No, that's the um, you are even at the canality level to be up considering God's will versus sin. It is God's will versus God's will that you need to get the accurate one. <laughs> I don't know if you get the difference of what I'm saying. Because some people, their only option is sin versus God's will. No, there are times that it is God's will. But you want to get the perfect will, not the acceptable will. That's another level. Not that you're saying you're comparing. <laughs> How can we? 
Do you get what I'm saying? That you are putting God's will versus sin as the option. Lord, should I do? How can you do that's not anything? You don't need anybody to approve you on that. We are talking about when you have God's will versus God's will, and you get the accurate one. That's approval. You are mature. This thing that is so for some Christians is no longer an ambition. That their life is pleasing to God. That their life is acceptable to God. Yes, Listen, he said, is that is where Christianity has direction. Not a my will, but thy will be done. That's where Christianity has meaning. And it begins with study. Somebody says study. Study. Study is not just reading. Study is evaluating to understand and become outstanding. Study is not just reading to understand. Many times when we read at a certain stage, we gather the intelligence to preach. I don't study God's word to preach. Sir. You will notice. The gist and gist in. It's not for preaching. I don't study. Ah, I want to preach today. I will go and study now. No, no, no. I'm just bringing out of the well. I study to live by it. You don't, don't, it, you, will be, you will be a hypocrite soon when you know more than you practice. You'll be a hypocrite soon when you know more than you practice. The lifestyle of practice is the deal. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So I'm speaking about this scripture and I'm saying that it's an approval. Number two way to get God's approval is obedience. Let your desire be obedience. Number one, I said study. Number two, let it matter to you that you are obedient to the will of God. God will not approve of you in disobedience. He told you to do some things. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, write this down. God will not approve. My brother, you could have been right to do it. All this I'm preaching now, you to change your life. Baby. Okay. You know? God will not approve us. Write this down. God will not approve us of knowledge beyond our last point of obedience. Let me repeat it again. God will not advance you in knowledge of his will beyond your last point of obedience. The last thing God told you, have you done it? I don't know if you understand. Even me, and I say this, I'm sure, you know, I'm, 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 I'm a very honest man. When I tell you to do something and you don't do it, telling you to do something else, I just look at that and say, I'm not ready for you. I don't know what I'm saying. Come on, that you are sleeping on me. I will not give you my. I don't want you to do anything again. <laughs> you don't, I don't feel like talking to you again. Just let alone God. God said, Give that me money. He said, Lord, I'm coming. He won't say another one. Should the mighty one, the almighty, be wrestling with your will? I'm simply saying, God will not advance your knowledge beyond your last point of obedience. What was the last thing God told you to do? Have you done it? Please, are you guys get what I'm saying? Yes, God will not advance your knowledge beyond your last point of obedience. Now, I'm repeating it again. God will not advance your knowledge beyond your last point of obedience. Number three, that God approves of or what thing to do is sound judgment in excellence. In Philippians chapter 1, verse 8 to 11. Philippians chapter 1, verse 8 to 11. Are we blessed this evening here? Who reads for us? Philippians chapter 1, verse 8 to 11. For God is my record. For God is my record. Can you say that about yourself? God. That God is my record. God is my record. That is a very strong statement. Now God has a call for my record. He knows me. He knows. God is my record. You may think you know me. God is my record. God is my record. I say the same thing. God is my record. God is my record. Read on my darling. Huh? How could I come after you, Lord? Uh-huh. In the bonus of Christ of Jesus Christ. Read on my dear. 
And this I pray. This I pray. That your love may abound yet more. That more. your love may abound yet more and more. In knowledge. In and knowledge. In and in all judgments. It says that your love may abound more and more in knowledge. May your love abound more and more in Jesus' name. Amen. As I call it, the sound judgment expressed in excellence. Your love for God is expressed more and more in knowledge and in sound judgment. Look at the next thing. Look at the next thing. That, he may approve things that, are excellent. that you can now start to approve of things that are excellent. Because your love abounded more in knowledge and in all judgments. Please, do you understand what I'm saying? Your love for God abounded more in love and in more judgments. Love and knowledge in for all judgment. You, you grew in the love of God and in all knowledge. So, excellent. Complete it, sir. And that ye may be sincere. And you may be sincere. And without offense to you. And without offense. You know, some of us come on one hour world. We'll just be looking for how to stand up. You will not believe it, sir. Nothing do them all. Just be like, I don't stay here for long. I don't stay here, don't stay here for long. He's touching your spirit. True. You will not believe it. You will just think that, okay, true, true, what's that is itself. It's not true, sir. That is in yourself. It's because it's not doing it, sir. Have you not watched him that you couldn't stand up and go and eliminate? <laughs> this one is even confirmed your relation. You'll be like, oh boy. Oh boy, let's finish this. It is lack of appetite. It is, it is, it is that carnality. You just think it's freelance. No, there is a spirit that allows a man to receive God's word. Please, are you hearing what I'm saying here? Yes, Let it land on you tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Your Christian life becomes way easier to live when this spirit lands on you. Your learning activity, you will learn from bed that flies, cockroach that crawls. You will see every part as learning in knowledge and no love. Nothing will be a waste again. It's a realm. Just because your attitude changed. Don't let your definition of your experience as a Christian be the final. There is more. There are destinations in God. You can move. Hallelujah. Don't be deceived that because you are sweating or because you are trying, that is the end. There is more. There is more in God. There is more, people of God. There is more. There is so much more we cannot finish this well. Did I say well? It's a river. Glory to God. I want to invite you to have a delicate delight on a daily basis. Somebody wrote me today and said, Sir, I don't know where you are getting this your today's counsel from, but it's changing my life. Yes. Meanwhile, it's from the word of God. If I take too much credit. Proverbs 24, verse 18. Let me show you. Let me show you a principle of life. Where I got the today's quote from. Let me just encourage somebody. Who read for me? Proverbs 24, verse 17 and 18. You just don't when the enemy is falling. Don't be happy when your enemy falls. Continue. And let not that heart be glad when he stumbles. Don't be glad when he stumbles. Your enemy, your enemy, we don't. Let the Lord see it. The Lord see it. And if this is him. And say, you are happy about your enemy for me. And he's unhappy. Uh -huh. And he turns away his rod from him. And he turns away the rod from him. And say, okay, I'm not, I'm not punishing him again. Don't mock others. Lest you replace them soon. I'm telling you. Let's go. It was him that said this to me this morning. Because it's every day I ask him, Lord, what is the counsel for today? He's the one that said, Know your lilies. I didn't think of it. It was him that said, Know your lilies. I had, like, that's how he had it. Know your lilies. And I wrote it out. What am I saying? Every day of your life, there's something God wants to pass through you to the earth. Every day, either in music, a beat, a sound, a connection, a vibe, don't let God be stranded. There is an amount of words, quantity of information and intelligence that must be downloaded daily from heaven to make this act balanced. And it must come from yielded vessels. 
be part of those that God can use. Did you hear what I said? Yes, sir. There is an amount, just like every day of your life, there is an amount of information that you must say to be normal. There is an amount of defecation you must go to toilets to be normal. If you don't get it, there's a problem. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes, I was told about this anatomy of the elephant that an elephant eats 110 pounds food daily and gives out 90. That's why it's the biggest. The ant eats about 5 pounds daily and gives out 0. Point something. It's the smallest. Because <laughs> the ant does not eat it quite excrete. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. He's the smallest. The ant is the smallest. How much you give out daily is the proof you can take more tomorrow. <laughs> you have money. You can't give out. He says there is that gathered to his own destruction. You know, he says that this is scattered and yet increased. There is that we told them more than his meat and tended towards poverty. If you can't give, you can't get, sir. In these principles, he might look like dogs. Start early. Because there's a level of life you get to, you won't be able to practice that principle easily again. <laughs> it will look like punishment. <laughs> you don't the age now. It's just like saying an elderly man should give birth to be pregnant again. It's tough. That's how it will look like. It will look unreasonable for you to start to live a sacrificial life at a level. It will look unfair to say you should get pregnant now. Ah, you say, are you not being fair? Are you sure this is true? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I hope this has blessed you a little. I will just pray in the Holy Ghost and say, Lord, I will live for you, baby. Just pray for the prayer on the Holy Ghost. I mean, pray in the Holy Ghost. I say, Lord, I help me to live for you, baby. Lord, I live for you. There is an amount of intelligence that heaven must download on the earth that He looks for men and you and I that will do His will on earth to cascade that information to the earth. Can we pray and say, Father, help me do your will daily. Let me experience your approval. Let it be more important to me than that of men. Lord, I obtain your approval. Father, I obtain your approval. Let it matter to me, O oh God, as the most important delight of the day for me. To do thy will, O oh God, have I come. Glory to God. Let it become my second nature to do the will of God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. A passion for your will. Are you praying or you are sleeping? Are you praying or you are truly desiring? Come on, pray. Say, Lord, I receive grace to do your will. I receive grace to accomplish your purpose. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. You see, I thought you'd say better amen. amen. Let's say one more better amen. amen. Anybody that helps you to do spiritual things is helping your destiny. Yes, sir. Tell you that makes you gravitate towards God, towards fasting, towards prayer, towards giving. You cannot be wrong giving, sir. Yes, sir. I assure you, you cannot be wrong. Your generosity to man and to God is noted. There was an unbeliever that was giving in Acts chapter 9, his name was called Cornelius. Heaven is telling me, so we have noticed you are a giver. Read it, unbeliever. Thank you, unbeliever. There was a man in scriptures, they were they invited Jesus Christ. You need to come into uh, uh, go and pray for this man because he has built the church that we have. This, they call it synagogue. He built a synagogue. Just yeah, let's go to his house. <laughs> 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 God comes to your house when you build his house. Hey. He's there. He said, this one has built a house. In Acts of the Apostles, there was a lady that the Bible says that they had to go and pray for her because she was a committed person in God's house. You're not angry. Pastor, you not come and greet me in my own time. Do you know what those people do to get that kind of attention? You are saying that. If it is easy money that we sell in God's house, how much of your resources has built God's house? 
that you want to benefit from. Or you think God does not look after God will just take in the heart of the pastor, the disinterest. They will not just see you. I'm sick, I'm sick. Pastor will not be empathized. Jesus, they told him, this one has built up the synagogue. He said, let's go to his house. <laughs> let's go to his house. We're not going to pray for him on the streets. <laughs> Let us go to his house. So let's go to his house. We go there and you can tell. The whole household was saved. Now, what am I bringing to attention? Leave daily without anybody monitoring you for the glory of God. Listen, this thing I'm telling you, if you, if you by any chance, after hearing this message, don't know how to respond to it, Satan will still take advantage of you. Because the problem about this type of discussion is that the next time you hear it, it becomes more watchy. It's not carrying the same level of urgency. When you don't apply intelligence immediately, you lose the concentration. That's why that like Satan comes immediately. Immediately, when it's still hot. You do the word of God instant. That's when you get the value. As they hurt, put out that. As they hurt. You must learn that this time because it's going to his life, sir. Glory to God. Yeah. Now, I want to share what I titled the five gifts of Christ, of God. The five gifts of God really, to humanity. And I want to share this to make aware the believer or to make the believer aware. Mama is giving us to match pen and risk God. Same time. So let's appreciate Mama. She's back to the She's back to the Let's zoom in. Off white and black. You know, so look at what it says. Now, this thing I want to share with you is to make us become more aware of what God has given us. When you now know what God has given you, it helps you fulfill your purpose better. Please hear me. There are five things. Now, I've listened to men of God that I respect, preach on this title, and I have studied a little more. Some of them have said it is three gifts. Some of them have said it is two. But I noticed there are five. Uh -huh. I mean, yes. I noticed you. I noticed there are five. Just in case, eh? I'm right. Thank you. That's right. Praise God. Praise God. <laughs> I can't be wrong anyway. <laughs> I don't see a five. And I don't know why they did not see the five. I don't know. But guys saw that they are five. And I think I should share five according to what I said. Praise God. But don't forget, that does not take my respect from them. Mm -hmm. I honor them. I celebrate them every day. But I notice there are five. Number one, the first gift God has given to the believer is the gift of salvation. That is very clear. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6 and 2, verse 8. Let's read it so that we can quickly identify it. God gave us this. Please, I would like someone to help me with fast scriptures. You know, if you use a good phone, your phone should go fast to scriptures, please. Or your Bible, whichever one you are using, please. Ephesians 2, verse 6 to 8. Please, you hear these messages? Go back and say. Okay, and I made us all together. I made us sit together in every place in Christ Jesus. Uh -huh. That in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace. He might show the exceeding riches of his grace. Hallelujah. Ah, yeah. As we read and say, in his kindness towards us through Jesus Christ. Read on. He said, For by grace are you saved through faith. And that not of yourselves. And that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. It is what? The, the gift. gift of God. What is the it that is the gift? Salvation. Salvation. Thank you. If you know English, it's not very deep. It is the gift. Salvation is a gift. Praise the Lord. Salvation is a gift. I have always explained, Mama, you bear me with this. I've always almost explained salvation like a box. That salvation. You know how you call first time, That's it. That's it. That's how it is. Salvation, I am I'm conscious. That's the best way I can explain it. Salvation is a gift. Did you see that? I'm not the one that wrote today. It is the gift of God. Complete so that will be clear. Not of what? Not of what? Lest any man should so there is no boasting because it's a gift. Yes. 
Salvation is a gift of God. What does it mean to be saved? The word salvation is from the Greek root word, sozo. They are also call it soteria. They mean one and the same. To save someone from trouble is a package. But to also say somebody has been released into abundance is salvation. Because it's not just to save us from trouble. You know, do you know what I mean? That? That's, I call that deliverance. You are delivered from trouble. Then you are saved into abundance. Glory to God. Oh, yeah. So in our box of salvation, there are many treasures inside. Yes, sir. There's a treasure of healing. There's a treasure of miracles. There's a treasure of wisdom. There's a treasure of redemption. There's a treasure of, you know, sanctification. There's a treasure of holiness. All of those things are what we call the package of salvation. Now, if you read Isaiah chapter 12, verse 3, it says, With joy shall you draw water out of the well of salvation. If you wish, that well is like a package of salvation. Yes, so, joy comes to help you experience the package of salvation. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. That's why you hear me say that it is forbidden for you as a member of this ministry to be depressed. Mm. It's forbidden. Yes, sir. Don't allow, otherwise you will never experience the beauty of your salvation. Mm. Play some music, soon it will catch up. Don't ask why we should play music. Play it first, then we ask why we play. First of all, we play. Is that why we should play? We'll be hearing the reason. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So there's a gift of salvation. Put up your right hand and say, I have, I have the gift of God. The gift of salvation. Say, I am saved. It is a gift, not of works, that I should not boast. I will not boast, but I will testify that I am saved. If you believe you are saved, say big amen. amen. Why must we remind ourselves? Your salvation is both for now and your future. Yes, sir. On that day when Christ shall return, we will not be saved because we did something well. We will be rewarded because we did something well, but our salvation will not be because we did something well. Mm. Did you get what I just said? Yes, sir. Entering this room now, this house, we are all here. The reward is both that are here, and then those that distinguish themselves, we give them best students. We are not in this room. I mean, we didn't walk. So, see it that way that we are saved. And our salvation is of God. Praise God. Hallelujah. That's why I know you will never be found in hell. Yes, sir. I thought I would hear that. Hey. Never. Your name was not written in the book of life with pencil, it was written with the eternal blood of Jesus Christ. Your salvation is irreversible. Yes, Tell anybody I said so on behalf of Jesus Christ. Your salvation is permanent. Yes. The Bible says whatsoever the Lord does shall be permanent. Yes, I want to let you know the only way to lose your salvation is to tell those guys, I don't want to hear a useless just Go and do that. They will know that you have lost your salvation. Now you confess your Christ as Lord and Savior. I have not renounced. Even when you abuse him, he has not left you. Because he's no longer allowing you to fall from his hands. It's a mark of irresponsibility that I cannot keep you. Mm. Salvation is a gift, glory to God. Hallelujah. And you must cherish it, sir, yes, sir. To know that you can never be in hell's list. I am. You should know this is a gift. A, a reassuring piece of a gift of peace. That you know you are saved forever. Amen. I'm not the one, like I said, I don't want to be taking too much credit. It is God that said it. That's why I used to shout, I'm not the one that wrote scripture. It's not because I, I'm trying to sound humorous. It's to let you know that it's not about what I'm trying to make nice. I'm not a, philo a philosopher trying to share a grand philosophy. This is our eternal concept. They have, my family has not been able to put a full stop to that discussion. I'm only showing you from scripture. It is the gift of God. And you should cherish this gift, people of God. If you don't cherish your salvation, you will lose it. David said, Restore unto me what? The joy of my that, That's why I'm telling you that salvation comes with joy. When you get born again and you are not having joy, there is a problem. You won't be able to sustain it. Because you didn't understand what you were saved from. 
Salvation has joy. When you say glory, that thing is joy. Don't say that when you just say glory again. You are not just saved, sir. You are saved by Omar Yahweh. You are not saved. The joy of my salvation. That salvation comes with joy. It comes with joy. It is from there we can draw water. We can draw satisfaction. Because we have our salvation and we rejoice. Let those that are angry go and get angry. Hug just so much you must hug just I'm a safe man. I'm a safe man. You know how many people are not safe? Yeah. You know how many people that you suffer because you hurt them? Too bad and too late. Yes, so bad for the devil, it's good for me. So bad for the devil, it's good for me. I'm telling you, sir. I'm saved, sir. I'm saved. I'm saved. I'm saved. I'm saved. I'm saved. There's nothing you can do, sir. I'm saved. Glory to God. And there's a joy in salvation. When we talk about spiritual, there's something that excites us. We're not being Hispanic about it. We're not being emotionally triggered. We are responding from our spirit because we know that the joy of the Lord is our strength. Glory to God. Somebody rejoice for what I'm going to do. Please take your seat. We are saved people. That's why I know. That's, you see, I'm teaching these things because some of you here, you'll be the teachers tomorrow. There is an amount of intelligence that us must have to be balanced. Yes. Trust me. When there are no preaching priests, there's chaos all around town. That's why we must preach boldly, sir. We must create the environment to allow the word of God to have meaning in our lives. Not just theoretical victors. The practical winners. You see, there's something that it does to you when you know that your salvation is not lost. You stand strong, sir. You stand Gidiba. And say, look, you devil, you are a bastard. You have no place in my life and I will never give you an inch. You must say this thing, sir. The joy of your salvation. The joy of your salvation. Let me say, restore to me. The joy, that joy I used to feel. Now, he did not have the salvation of Christ, too. He did not have this, it was not Christ's salvation, he was saying, no. mm. Jesus, Jesus don't come. Jesus has not come now. Though he was a prophet, we give to David. You know, David is a don. David is not another man, no. Ha. He was a king, he was a prophet, and he was a priest. One man. Even Abraham was not that. Abraham was a prophet, with no, no doubt. God told the man that tried to collect Abraham's wife to go and meet him, say, for that man is a prophet. Okay. After lying. <laughs> Do you understand? Is this your wife? No. Are you not my sister? In the, and God visited him. God told him, you are a dead man. Why didn't he go and meet Abraham? Abraham, why are you lying? These things are not of me. Would you be lying? I don't like you lying. Righteousness. That the, and, and to make it humorous, the Bible will not dodge it. The Bible will not package it that he wrote it and not actually. So they, they wrote it there. He said, She's his sister. And thou told us that God did not disturb him. Went to go and visit the king in a dream. You are a dead man. King <laughs> <laughs> He said, You can even. He said, It's because you have not yet that you did not know. That's why I've not killed you. <laughs> Read it. <laughs> he said, It's because you are honest. I've not killed you. <laughs> 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 That's his. I think what you can imagine that it's not because you were honest. Tell your sleep would not be talking to you. The God that justified the ungodly. Look, 
your picture of God, you are better learn in this house. Stop defending God that we, he knows how to defend himself. All these people you go to hell. Are you the one that made hell for them? Ah. What's your is that your desire? Ah. You have not yet made us know about heaven. You are shouting here. Are you the creator? But not saying there's no hell. Please, please don't mistake. I don't mean telling us about the doom of life instead of the bliss of life. That's a bliss in destiny. Yes, sir. Mm. I've made up my mind. I will preach the bliss of this. Hey! I will tell the world how good this God is. I will make men believe by my character and attitude and by my persuasive words. I will make men know that God is good. Oh. I will do everything in my power, in my disposition. I will use my personality to convince humanity. It's a decision I've made. I will defend this God. I will, I will do everything I can to make men know and reconcile that they did not know him before. If you know him, you will rush him. You will, you will. He said, do his slain, I will serve him. That's Job. Do you know what I mean? He said, do his slain me. Leave me and him. Leave me and him, sir. Open me. Ah. The God of my salvation. The Lord whom I trust. I have no other God but you. You must come to that level, sir. And I'm inviting you, listen to me. This ministry is going to infect and affect the whole world. Yeah. I am saying it. I hope your amen can be loud. I say it will affect the whole world. Must come to know about the goodness of this God. Yeah. Notice what where we are. Notice, I will remind you where it's taking us to. I will remind you about tonight. Yes, Make no mistake, sir. I have set my face like a fleet. A man exists that remains for this God. I'm, I'm, it's not a prayer point, and it's not today. I want to encourage you cherish the joy of your salvation. Yes, sir. Let it matter to you. See this joy. Come around the, the conversations that encourage it, not the conversations that will suffer from it. No more about it. I hear more. There is plenty. It's plenty. I'm telling you. There's plenty, sir. May God open our eyes. May we come to the knowledge of His love. May we come to the power of His truth. May we come to the fellowship of his suffering. Now we may make conformable unto his death. Amen. Even the death of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And we will come to the brightness of his glory. We will shine like stars. Hallelujah. Amen. Somebody say glory. Amen. So we're not just doing something of communist. If you listen to me well, you know I'm not a regular preacher. I went for a training, and training program the other day. It was one of the old women that came in and said, Pastor, you are here. Reverend, you are here. Ah, this man is a man. Oh, ah. One man came up to and said, I have been watching you. Because I didn't go as pastor, I went as doctor. Amen. 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 Yeah, Amen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll bring it up for you. Ah. So she came, she said, I'm a Catholic. And I know that you're a Pentecostal pastor. But the future is in your hands. Her words. Wow. She's an elderly woman. Say, God is giving you something that the way you talk and reason, I can hear a future in your mouth. Come hmm. I sat back, I relaxed. I said, Man, say more. Say, I'm serious. Elderly woman. She said, I don't know. But the way you are thinking, you are not talking like a regular. That I was surprised that they say you're a pastor. But I can tell that there's a problem. Our words, and I'm not exaggerating, I might not be using the exact verbatim, but those are our thoughts. As she said, I know that the future has been committed to you. Maybe you are the one that will change our perspective in the Catholic about the Pentecostal church. Our words. And that's why I wear my ring, my cap. Has to know. Same words. Listen, sir. God, God knows how to give that thing to somebody who is ready. Yes, sir. These are preparations for us, sir. Yes, sir. Don't pity me that I'm sweating. Don't pity that I'm energetic about this. No. I was born for this. Yes, sir. I was born to help humanity. Yes, With profound truth and concepts of this God. And you are joining us today. Yes, sir.
we are taking the world inch by inch amen. to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Somebody say a big amen. amen. Number two, gifts God has given us is what I consider for me. I want to quickly add it to the spiritual gifts. Spiritual gifts. First of all, we must understand that it is God's gift to humanity. Spiritual gifts. When we say spiritual gifts, it's different from the next one I'm going to be mentioning, which is gifts of men. Spiritual gifts. And to be clear, I'm speaking about spiritual gifts from 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Who's going to read for us from verse 1 to verse 5? Now concerning spiritual gifts, I will not have you ignorant. I will not have you ignorant. Uh -huh. That ye were Gentiles, yes, try a way unto this dumb idol, uh -huh. even as ye were led. Yes. Therefore, I give you to understand. Yes, sir. That no man speaking by the spirit of God. He says, no man speaking by the spirit of God. Jesus accursed. Calls Jesus Christ a curse. And that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord. No man can say Jesus is Lord. But by the Holy Ghost. But by the Holy Ghost. Now, there are diversities of gifts. Now, he says, now, guys, there are diversities of gifts. The same spirit. But the same spirit. That is from the same source. The spirit of God. Read on. And there are gifts. Read and it. there are differences of administration. There are differences of administration. But the same law. But the same law. Read on. And there are diversities of operations. But there are diversities of operations also. But it is the same God. The God. same who? The same who? The same who? God. God. Uh -huh. Which walketh all in all. That walks all in all. Now read on, sir. But the manifestation of the Spirit uh -huh. is given to every man to profit with God. Uh -huh. So these are the gifts now. One, given by the Spirit. Given by what? The Spirit. Everybody, given by what? The Spirit. Given by what, please? The so the Spirit is given here. There are nine of them. One, the first three sees. The second three, they, they say. And the third three, they do. All right? See, say, and do. Read it for us. The word of wisdom. Word of wisdom. To another, the word of knowledge. Word of knowledge. By the same spirit. By the same spirit. To another, faith. Faith. All right. By the same spirit. By the same spirit. To another, the gift of healing. Another gift of healing. By the same spirit. By the same spirit. To another, the working of miracles. Working of miracles. To another, prophecy. Prophecy. To another, the of spirit. So these are gifts. Are the sending of spirits. To another, diverse kinds of tongues. Diverse kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. The interpretation of tongues. But all these workers, now listen to this. He said that all these what? Workers, uh -huh. that one and the self same spirit, uh -huh. dividing to every man, dividing to every man, severally, as he will. severally divide now in a shenam, in a shenam to every man as he wills. Now, what does that mean? I said three C. The three that C are the word of knowledge the word of wisdom and the discernment of spirits they see the ones that say the word of, of the speaking in tongues the interpretation of tongues and prophecy they say the three that do faith that special faith two walking on miracles and the gift of healing they do so we have nine in all that is what I call spiritual gifts. And it gives to every man according as he wills. Do you desire any? It's my prayer. Tell the Lord I desire this one. You'll be seeing things. The word of word of knowledge speaks about the things that have happened. Word of wisdom talks about things that are happening and that will happen. Are you get what I'm saying? Yes, sir. The servant of spirit speaks about what is happening now. To understand is different discerning of spirit, not discerning, discerning of spirit is different from discernment. So there's such a gift called discerning. There are times there was a story of Ken Hagen, he was praying over a sick person, and he said he was praying, he had done everything he needed to do. And then he said, Holy Ghost, what is the matter? After praying so long, he said the Lord showed him in a vision, sticking out of the person, a the, the liver of that individual, and was a demon hanging there. 
you will see some situations that look normal. They are not ordinary. He said the people was hanging there like a, an ugly, ugly beast sticking up at the edge of the, the person. He said, as he saw it, he just said, you vow spirit, I command you out. The demon fled out. Instantly, the person got home. There are some things that without deciding, you will not know how to solve. You don't be touching the surface and not touching, touching the spirit. And the Lord has given us these gifts. Freely as you desire. Usually to the degree of how you want God to use you is how these gifts become relevant to you. As a music director, you need these gifts. As a resident pastor, you need these gifts. Sir. Members that come to torture you. People that come to lie to you. The first person to report his case is not the innocent person. No. Yes. You need to listen to the other side. Discerning of spirits. Sometimes you come that this is a lying spirit. Sometimes you know that these things are not true. How do I know it's a gift? And the more you use it, the better you are. I believe that this also can be classified as the gift of God to us. The spiritual gifts. Let me quickly touch the third one. The gifts of men. Hallelujah. <laughs> the gifts of men. In Ephesians, Ephesians chapter number 4 from verse 7. He says, and he has given to all men grace. Hallelujah. Who read for me, please? But unto everyone, but unto every man, is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. According to the measure of what? The gift of Christ. Talking about Christ being a gift. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. All right, so there's a gift of Christ. Now, somebody calls it Christ being a gift or the gift that Christ gives. Please, do you understand what I just explained? What I said, the gift of bio. Bio can be a gift or the gift that bio gives. Please, do you understand that? Yes. Read on, sir. Wherefore, Wherefore he says, he says, when he has set it up on high, when he has set it up on high, he led captivity captives. You know, I've told you about that story. How he went into hell and disbanded all that was in hell and led those that were in hell out of hell. Glory to God. Read on, sir. He left captivity uh -huh. and gave gifts. Of and him. gave gifts. He gave what? Gifts. Gave what? Gifts. S, Abby. Yes, S, gifts. What are the gifts he gave to men or to humanity? Read on. Now that he ascended, yes. What is it? At the first seven. Yes. Into the lower part of the earth. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, sir. Uh -huh. so, so, so he gave some apostles. So the gifts are the apostles. Your apostles are without them. Foundation of the gospel. There will be no invasion into the land. Men are gifts. He gave gifts as men. He gave gifts as men. God has given us as gifts. Your man of God is a gift to you, sir. I am. He gave us as gifts. When some of us here, we've been called to ministry. You are a gift when therefore you are called to people. You are a gift to the people that God sent you to. Unfortunately, some people wreck their gifts, tear it apart, desecrate their gifts, and blame the gifts and the giver. But he said he gave it, spread it up quickly so we can go to the next one. And some prophets. And some prophets. And some evangelists. Evangelists. And some pastors. And some pastors. And, pastors pastors and teachers. The of the Why did he give them as gifts? He gave us so that these saints can be perfected. That's why. Read on. For the work of the ministry. For the work of the ministry. For the edifying of the body of Christ. For the edifying of the body of Christ. We all come to the unity. So we all come to the unity of, of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God. Hallelujah. Unto a perfect man. Unto a perfect man. Unto the measure of the stature of, unto the, the, measure of, of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Time will fail me today because I'm not teaching on those gifts to start to explain those five gifts. There might even be more than five because in Romans 12 we see another set of six. Described there. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So I speak of this tonight to say that you have gifts and 
you need to know the gifts. The first one was the gift of salvation. The second one is spiritual gifts. The third one is gifts of men. The gifts of men. The fourth one is the gift of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. The gift of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. <laughs> Woo! The gift of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, oh my Father, for giving us your Son and leaving your Spirit till thy will on earth is done. You don't know that song? Thank you, oh my Father, for giving us your Son and leaving your Spirit till thy word on earth is done. The gift of the Holy Spirit. 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 The most precious, the most important. The gift of the Holy Spirit. Woo! This is the gift that we must cherish. Hallelujah. The gift of the Holy Spirit. The gift of the Holy Spirit. Now let's take a look at it. In Romans 14, verse 16. Quickly, quickly, quickly. We'll take the communion shortly and then we'll close. Please, have you been blessed tonight, please? I'm loading you. You know, we don't preach every day. But what we give you per day should last you at least a few days. Amen. Amen. In the book of John, chapter 14. John. Did I say Romans? Please go to John. Sorry. 14. Verse 16. And I will pray to the Father that he may abide with you forever. The world cannot be seen because it's yet in us. Neither knoweth him, but you know him, for he dwelleth with you. Hallelujah. And shall be in you. Read on. I will not give you a comfort. Yes, sir. I will come to you. Yes. Yet a little while. Yes. And the world is yet me no more. Amen. But you shall see, but you will see me because I live. Hmm. You shall be also. Hallelujah. And that day you shall know that I am in my father. Hallelujah. And ye in me. Amen. And I in you. Hallelujah. If I have come, if I have, if I have at my commandments, if I have at my, my commandments, commandments, yeah. And keep it there. In he it is that loveth me. Hallelujah. And he that loveth me shall be loved by my father. Hallelujah. And I will love him. Amen. I will manifest myself, myself to him. That is verse 20, 21, right? Yes, sir. Uh, read on. Judas said unto him, Not his child. No. How is it that thou wilt manifest thyself unto us and not unto the world? Judas said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my father will love him, mm. and he will come unto him mm. and make our home with him. Hallelujah. He that loveth me not, yeah. he that not my saying, okay. and the word which ye hear is not mine, All right. but the father which sent me. Uh -huh. This now, means, yeah, read on. This is how I spoke unto you, being yet present with you, mm. but the comforter which is the Holy Ghost, uh -huh. whom the father will send. In my name. Yes, sir. He shall teach you all things. All things. And bring all things to your remembrance. Hallelujah. Whatsoever I have said unto you. Hallelujah. Now I live with you. Hallelujah. My peace I give unto you. Hallelujah. Now as the world giveth, uh -huh. give I unto you. Yes, sir. Let not your heart be troubled. Okay. Neither let it be afraid. Uh -huh. Ye have heard how I said unto you, I go away and come again unto uh -huh. you. Uh -huh. If you love me, you will rejoice. Hallelujah. I, as I said, I go unto the Father, for my Father is better than I. Uh -huh. And now I have told you before it come to pass, that when it come to pass, you might believe. Hereafter, I 
will not talk more with you. Uh -huh. For the prince of this world cometh, uh -huh. and I have not seen him, uh -huh. but that the world may know that I love the Father, and as the Father gave me commandment, uh -huh. even so I do. Amen. Arise. Hallelujah. Now, go let, now, look at us in that same spirit. Flow down to chapter 16, from verse 12, quickly. Verse 12, verse 12. In that same spirit, chapter 16, verse 12, downwards. I have yet many things to say unto you, uh -huh. but you cannot bear them down. Uh -huh. How be it? Uh -huh. When he, the Spirit of truth, is come, uh -huh. he will guide you in all things. Uh -huh. For he shall not speak of himself, uh -huh. but whatsoever he shall hear, uh -huh. that, that shall he speak. Uh -huh. And he will show you things to come. Amen. He shall be reside in you, for he shall receive of mine. Uh -huh. And shall show it unto you. Yes, sir. All things that the Father has a man. Amen. Therefore, said I, yes, sir. That he shall take of mine. Yes, sir. And shall show it unto you. Yes, sir. A little while. Yes. And you shall not see me. Uh -huh. And again, a little while. Uh -huh. And you shall see me. Amen. Stop there. Yes, to the Father. Pray. That's verse 16, right? Yes, sir. Praise God. Amen. Now, I want to see there that all of that chapter 14, chapter 16, even chapter 15 refers to the gift of the Holy Spirit. I just wanted to see different things he said about him. If I, he said, the Father and I will, the Father and the Spirit of God will move into your boat. He that honoreth me. Now the Holy Ghost is a gift. He said, and you shall receive the Holy Ghost after, he said, you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. So the Spirit of God is a gift. And I want to undermine the conversation so i will not spend all of that today i will just highlight that the gift of the holy spirit is upon us now praise the lord Hallelujah. i said praise the lord Hallelujah. in luke 24 verse 49 it says receive you the holy ghost do you have that quickly sharp sharp and behold i send thee i send the promise, the promise of, of my father upon you. He said, he said, he said, I send the promise of my father upon you. Uh -huh. But carry ye in the city of Jerusalem. Yes, sir. Until ye be endured with power, power from, on from on high. You are receiving power from on high. Amen. I said, you are receiving power Amen. from on high. What, I think it was in John that he said, receive ye the Holy Ghost. Check it for me. Is, is it that scripture? Is it that same Luke 24? Receive me the Holy Ghost. And amazing. Amazing how that the Holy Ghost is on us right now. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So we have the gift of the Holy Ghost. He is with us now. Not a future gift. He is with us today. He is with us today. Aha. Uh -huh. John 2022. 20, John 20, 22. And when he had said this, when he had he said this, them, he breathed on them and said unto them, and said unto them receive, ye the Holy Ghost. receive ye the Holy Ghost. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Somebody say, I receive the Holy Ghost. I receive the Holy Ghost. Very simple. Receive. Let me receive the Holy Ghost. Finally, the gift of righteousness. <laughs> in Romans 5 17 tells us categorically read it for us sir I'm sharing with you five gifts of God five gifts of God righteousness is a gift the Holy Ghost the duty of the Holy Ghost is different from the duty of righteousness but they come as a package read it for us for if by one man's offense if by one man's offense death reigned by one death reigned by one much more they will receive that those who receive, will receive please much more those who receive much more they which they okay which receive abundance of grace they will receive the abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness and of the what the gift help me say now the gift the gifts of righteousness the imputation of righteousness. The gift is a gift, sir. It's a gift. Righteousness means standing in the presence of God without guilt or condemnation. Righteousness means the ability to take action without second guessing divinity. You know that you are taking action and you are not second guessing is this God's will, this is not God's will, because you have done it in faith. 
Don't forget, it is the act of faith that makes us stay and enjoy righteousness. Yes, it is the act of faith that makes God's righteousness be revealed. Yes. When you take actions without faith, God's righteousness is not revealed. Yes, sir. So the gift of righteousness is revealed because you did it by faith. Are you getting what I'm saying here? Yeah? Yes, you did it by faith. Don't get that house because you have money. Get that house because you have faith. Yes, Don't do that project because you have the money. Do it because you have faith yes, that God's righteousness may be revealed. Are we hearing what I'm saying? Yes, I will stop here for tonight. Have you been blessed? Yes, Let's give the Lord a round of applause. Somebody say, I'm God's righteousness in Christ Jesus. Yes, say it again, say, I'm God's righteousness in Christ Jesus. Right, so you can begin to prophesy that my life has to receive the communion right now. Can I have the communion brought to me right away, please? The cartoon says they begin to declare that say, and Lord, I'm your righteousness. Hallelujah. I maximize these five gifts in my life. The gifts of the Holy Ghost, the gifts of righteousness, the spiritual gifts, the gifts of